Welcome to the Jalen Rose Report and the Grantland Network. Jalen, what are we going to do? Got to give the people. But what do we give them? Give the people what they want. What do the people want, Jalen? Current events. People want, people want current events? They want us to spit hot fire. They spit, well, <laughs> Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. <laughs> So, I told, we talked about All Star Weekend last time, right? And we were talking about, and you know, you and I hung out this weekend. We were talking a little bit about what happens at All Star Weekend and this and that. And one of the things that I was surprised by was the, the entouraging of, of the current NBA state of the world. And we had this conversation after playing some ball. And, and I want, you broke down piece by piece how the entourage works. Now, before you go through it piece by piece, explain to me sort of like your feelings about it about the growth of the NBA at, or the professional athletes entourage they say it takes a village to raise a child and that's actually true mm -hmm. and to become successful in anything there are a lot of people along the way that help you whether it's academics you could point to teachers you could point to counselors you could point to people that were in administrative office and principals that help you get where you wanted to go on that path yep. in basketball it could be your high school coach your AAU coach your parents, your friends, your family, your brothers, your sister. There's so many different people that go into helping create a success story. Mm -hmm. When we consider the term entourage, for everybody out there listening, we're talking about people that work with you slash work for you and or people that are trying to get into your pockets. It sounds like that could be all the same person. Sometimes it is. Mm -hmm. And that's what leads to us talking about this topic today. Okay, now, how many, how many, when you were a player, let's just start with you. It was a, a bit of a different era. You know, it wasn't that long ago, but it's been a different era. How many people would you consider to be part of your entourage? Initially, an entourage starts out of people, and again, we, we're going to get to the business element, but it starts on a friendship element first. Mm -hmm. When you become successful, you can't now come through with your big body bands and talk about going to buy your new house in the suburbs and leaving everybody behind. Mm -hmm. Because that creates a separation in those relationships. And also, you want to thank all of those people that helped you along the way. Sure. So a lot of times it starts off as being, okay, one of my homeboys is really into fitness, so therefore, maybe you should do, you should try to go the route of being a trainer. Mm -hmm. Let's try to do what we can to get you certified to validate it. So you can not only work with me, but it's the theory of teaching someone the fish versus giving them fish. And that's the line that you always have to work versus entourage and enablers. I have people walking this earth right now that I've given thousands of dollars to mm -hmm. that are actually mad at me. And they're mad because they couldn't get in my pocket too. Because they didn't get more thousands. People love you when you're doing what they want you to do. Mm -hmm. But it's a difference if I'm teaching you how to fish versus giving you fish. Mm -hmm. And if I see you're not learning how to put the fish on the bait, if I'm seeing that you can't crank up the boat, if I'm seeing that you can't take me to the water where they're going to be fish, eventually you become a liability. Mm -hmm. So an entourage should be something that builds up the athlete, builds up the entertainer, that makes it more of a conglomerate, that makes it more of a force. Not a detractor. There's a big difference. So this, there could be anchor members of your entourage and engine members of your entourage. 100%. Okay, now you made the distinction, which I find interesting, is the, the personal people, like the people you have personal relationships that are part of your quote-unquote entourage, and the professional, right? Let's start with the professional. Like, as an NBA athlete, you can't do it all yourself. You can't be your own agent, your own manager, and your own publicist. You just can't. And also a successful athlete at the same time. You are going to need people. So what people do you have, and what roles do they play? For those on the outside looking in, you may not know, but every personality for the most part you see for public consumption. They can be media members, they work on TV, work in print, work on radio. Mm -hmm. They could be those that are coaches, assistant coaches, trainers. There could be those that are producers, executive producers, line producers, and then the athletes. They all have somebody that represents them. Mm -hmm. The first line of your entourage starts with your agent. Your agent. Before I walk across the start, before I walk across the stage with my red and white suit <laughs> to shake David Stern's hands, <laughs> I have to have an agent behind the scenes working to make sure that my draft stock is where it needs to be and also preparing me for what is it going to take at the workouts. 
What are they going to ask me to do? What drills? What's going to happen when they do the sit-down questions? What's going to happen when is it going to be both owners? Is it going to be the GM? Who's going to be in the room? And equally as important, you also have people that work with your agent a lot of times on the marketing side. Right now, between now and the NFL draft and when the NBA season ends between the NBA draft, you're going to see certain NFL players doing national interviews. Yep. Whether on ESPN, whether USA Today, whether it's in Slam Magazine, whatever that is. That's to help heighten their profile, to A, build their draft stock, but also create a basis for somebody that can not only be someone that's productive at their sport or entertaining, but they also want to cash in off the floor or away from the field. Mm -hmm. Now, how does the same person that negotiates your contract when the contracts were negotiated is also the same person that tells you what drills to do? Like, it doesn't seem right. Like, there's got to be sort of like money people and basketball people, right? Look at it like this. When somebody's representing your best interest, 99% of the time, you're not on the phone. Mm -hmm. So you hope they're relaying a message that you would relate, or if you are a fly on the wall listening, Things are being said that represent your best interest. I hate to tell everybody that has a manager with more than one client or an agent with more than one client, you hope that they're saying things that represent your best interest. That's where that trust comes in. So to your point about your agent, it's his job to make sure that you're not blindsided by anything. Mm -hmm. And if it comes to working out with drills, a lot of agencies have people that train on their behalf. So for example, David Falk, he represented Michael Jordan. Yep. Who was Michael Jordan's trainer? Tim Grover. They all worked under the same um, under the same umbrella. Mm -hmm. So while Tim becomes an independent contractor and continues to get more clients because he started off with Michael Jordan, of course that helps him not work with Dwayne Wade. Does David Falk in, in, indirectly get a piece of that now? No. But it's a relationship piece that validates everyone. You always need somebody to validate you and get you in the door. And I don't know if I spoke on the dynamic of Grover and Falk 100% accurate, sure. but I'm just giving the people from in front of the curtain a little what goes on behind the curtain. So let's let's walk through the people that I see with, with an NBA All-Star at All-Star Weekend. Let's walk through who they are. You've got your agent, right? So who comes with that? What roles do they play? Most of the time, if you see an athlete, you're not seeing them with their agent. Your agent gonna meet you for coffee, may meet you for happy hour, may meet you at the office, may not even have a personal relationship with you in 90% of the cases. Mm -hmm. It's a business, it's a professional relationship. And you don't want your agent to see you tricking golf or um, clicking glasses when it's your homeboy's birthday or um, your boy about to get married and you guys are going to hang out. You don't want your agent around in so those you, cases. Interesting, so you kind of, there's, your agent sort of is kind of like a coach in that way. You want to put on your best face for your agent so your agent best represents you when he talks to general managers. That's the person that's your lead domino. You need him to represent your best interest. If he has a foul feeling about you, in one way, shape, or form, it's going to be exposed. Because remember, and I actually don't like this about the NBA in particular, there are basically five agents that represent 90% of the league. Yep. So players are just really picking an agent because an agent can sell you on the fact that I can get you drafted higher. Mm -hmm. I have a relationship with that coach. I have a relationship with that GM. I have a relationship with that team. I have four players on their team. As a matter of fact, three of their four best players are my clients. As opposed to having an agent who does not have those relationships. It doesn't mean that the person that has the most players is actually better. It just means that they have more leverage. All right, so we've, we've covered the agent. Now, who, who are the other people? And your agent is responsible for your core business. Your agent should be the person that navigates the biggest deals in your situation. So if you're a professional athlete, the biggest deals in 98% of the cases, unless you're LeBron James as a rookie coming in getting a $90 million deal from Nike, 98% yeah. of the time your core business is going to be from the team. Yeah. So your agent is to protect that. Now you bring in other people that we're calling entourage to help build you off the floor and off the field. This is where it gets fun. This is where it gets fun. So a manager. Mm -hmm. A manager could be anywhere from somebody's dad, mom, brother, somebody that works with the agency, somebody that they went online, scouted and hired, 
somebody that they interviewed, they felt like they could do the job, somebody that they plucked from another job, plucked from another position. Your manager should be your first line of defense. And the manager is someone sort of from your personal relationship with or professional? You, in a lot of cases, if you don't start off having a personal relationship with your manager, mm. the goal is for it to be a personal relationship because you need, you need to trust your manager beyond just what happens with the team. Okay. Your manager should make sure that you as a person, Jacoby, is doing well, so therefore Jacoby can perform well for the team. Okay. And a lot of times, your manager can be on retainer. Mm -hmm. So now, here's what makes it tricky. I don't like retainer jobs. Oh, okay. Because what happens when somebody's on retainer, and you see this all of the time in entertainment, you have your agent and you have your manager. Your manager does not work for the agency. No. But you have people that work for the agency that get their check from there, not necessarily from you to talent. Mm -hmm. So if I'm getting a check already and I'm only going to get a percentage of your core business, but your core business really isn't stopping me from living in a good neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times... They only work for the clients that are big name clients that become an income in business as opposed to going after work, rolling up their sleeves, going over and beyond, help building something for someone that is not an income in business. Now, what, what's the difference between a manager and an agent? The difference between a manager and an agent is your manager should look out for your best interest as a person. Okay. Your agent is looking out for your professional best interest. Okay. So your manager may say, you should go be on a reality show. And your agent will say, you probably shouldn't you go be on a reality show. You shouldn't be on a reality show. But also your manager's goal is to get 10% of a deal. Uh -huh. Just like your agent's goal is to get 10, sometimes up to 20% of your deal. But your agent, a lot of times, isn't going to go after the low-hanging fruit. Yeah, yeah. Your agent going to go after the six-figure, seven-figure deals. Big-time companies come, they call. But they're not really doing the groundhog work. Mm -hmm. That's what you need your manager for, to lead the groundhog work. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're more of a personal. Who else is sort of in the, the personal part of the entourage? Your financial advisor. This is the most important person because while your manager is protecting your personal needs and your agent is protecting your professional needs, you got to protect your money. So, so the, the financial advisor is basically looking over the agents and the manager's shoulder. Well, yes. But this is what happened, and this is why agencies and agents have created a monopoly. They go get a 19-year-old player, and not only do they introduce you to an agent and tell you that they're going to get you a good draft stock, they also introduce you to their friend who's going to lead your financial advisory team. Mm-hmm. So then he's no longer really looking over the shoulder because he's getting the business from the agent, not necessarily the athlete. Correct. And they have a relationship, whether it's unwritten or unsaid, that as many clients as you bring me, that means I'm going to help do your taxes sure. for free. Of course. I mean, I'm going to manage your money for free. Of course. I mean, I'm going to do all these family favors for you and send your family on a vacation for free. That becomes all under the same umbrella. In theory, can work because you want them working in concert. But to your original point, you may want to keep those three people separate because nobody should protect your personal financial best interest better than your financial advisor. Absolutely. How did you handle it when you were in the league? Did you have a manager? It was a little bit of both. Sometimes managers can be terrible. Yeah. Just because somebody said that they're your manager, that does not mean that they can turn around and go get deals for you. Yes. Because they don't have the retainer muscle that the big agency has behind them. I've definitely met... Multiple people that said they managed one person before. You know that scenario? Like, I've definitely talked to three or four people that sort of represented Metal World Peace. And it's just kind of like, where does this end? As talent, this is what you do. Unless somebody giving you the kind of money where you can be exclusive, you're non-exclusive. Mm -hmm. You're always a free agent. You always have your ears to the ground. If somebody calling you, emailing you, texting you, hitting you up on Twitter, and they talking to you about an appearance, a potential opportunity, it's your job and or your manager's job to seek that out. A lot of times your agency, they're not going to be looking for that stuff. 
Can we get to the fun part of the entourage? Let's now? get to the fun part of the entourage. Now, what do you do? Your publicist. We talked yep. about the publicist. A little helps bit. Helps your profile. Helps you get interviews. Helps you for public consumption become a bigger brand, a bigger name. That helps everybody else do their job. It helps you go from becoming a business that's chasing to an incoming business. So your profile means a lot. Now, let me ask you this. As a member of the media, if I was in charge, and I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to. If I was Don't in get charge, fired. if I was in charge, <laughs> if I was in charge of an athlete, right, and I was an athlete's publicist, I would tell that athlete, "Don't do any interviews. Just don't. Just don't. Don't ever talk to the media." What's the downside to that? Some of the best and most high-profile current celebrities, they actually do that. Yeah, they're very selective when they speak, who they speak to, and what they're talking about to protect their brand. Because a lot of times, less is more. The one person that comes to mind that does the best job of this is Beyonce. Oh, I'm going to expose everything. By the way, it's my own movie that I produced. 100%. <laughs> you know? She does a very good job of keeping everything very meticulous. And that's coming up in a family, by the way, of a dad that was managing her for a long time, helped yep. created a brand with Destiny Child. Mom a designer. A mom, a very successful yep. designer. They love their family to death. They love their kids to death. So they already were ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. So they sprinkled that on her, I'm sure, and she's become very successful at that. Here are a couple of athletes that operate by that. Tim Duncan. You never see him say anything. Not a lot of big interviews with Duncan. Shows see him up. on the you cover see, of magazines. You don't see Tim Duncan on the cover of ad magazines. You no. don't see him uh, doing any of that. Slinging Hondas, yeah. He still get his four championship rings. He's still making the kind of money everyone else makes, mm. and he's still getting his endorsements and sneaking in his commercials. Well, where in the entourage is, like, your homeboy? Your homeboy slash best friend, I'm going to give him another term. Okay. It's called wingman. Okay. He's the Bundini Brown to Muhammad Ali. Who's Bundini Brown? He's the Flavor Flav to Chuck D. Okay, I know that. He's the hype man. He keeps you on task, keeps you on target. Yes, we have to protect the professional interest because that's why we're living in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. But also, we're gonna also have fun. So what 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 sort of responsibilities does this wingman have? The wingman can be anybody from your personal assistant quasi to your bodyguard quasi to the person that represents your best interest quasi, but also somebody that just gives you some sort of sanity that okay. allows you to be you. This is my homeboy before all of this. Mm -hmm. Before the, because if without, I would still have my homeboy if I didn't have the agent, if yeah. I didn't have the manager, if I didn't have the publicist. They're only there because of my professional yes. opportunities. And they have an obligation to fulfill those duties to you. My wingman probably played with me in high school. Uh -huh. My wingman probably grew up in the same project as me. My wingman probably was the guy that took me to school while I was in high school. It, it, couldn't that dynamic be strange? You know what I mean? Like, like I don't, I don't think my best friend would like want that job. You know what I mean? Well, a lot of times, if your wingman doesn't have a job that they're satisfied with, yeah, or didn't get the career that they sought after, they didn't become that brain surgeon. They didn't become that business owner that's making six figures a year. It becomes an opportunity. Now, what so if they... I'm going to pay somebody to protect my best interests? I'd rather it be my wingman. Sure. What if I'm going to be on a circus road trip and I'm going to be out of town for 14 days? Who's going to make sure that my house is still functioning properly? Or yeah. if, if the cable guy have to get in or if the cleaning person has to get in yeah. or life still happens, even though you're a professional athlete. Like people think just because you're a professional athlete, you don't have to still do normal things like take your kids to school sure. or spend time with your wife. Or spend time with your family. Yeah. Or the normal seeds yeah. that come oh, with the, the anybody. Heat's, the heat's broken. I got to talk to the guy. We got to yeah. get it fixed. Something, wrong with, the, yeah, something yeah. wrong with the toilet. Something wrong sure. with the, 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 the hot water. Like, mm -hmm. life happens. And you want somebody that you can give a key to your place that you trust. Yeah. That also, while you have access to my spot when I'm gone, this is not a frat house. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. We may treat it like that sometimes when I'm here. Okay, okay. But when I'm gone, as 
Has that ever been a problem in your life? That has been a problem in my With, life. What happened? Because I don't want people having more fun in my house <laughs> this, when I'm gone. Tell me what happened, Jalen. Than when I'm there. Tell me what happened. That's the best way I can say it without getting fired. <laughs> when I'm there, I partake in all of the fun. <laughs> when I'm out of town, this should be a museum. <laughs> <laughs> That's how this has to go. What about the the fun part, like going out? You know what I mean? Like, like if, if, I imagine sometimes that if NBA players, I bet because I, I I lived in New York for a long time. I know the sort of New York City club scene. You have to know people, the velvet rope, and blah blah blah. I imagine a lot of times they'll be like, especially bench dudes will be like, I want to go to Hot Club X, and they'll get there, and it's kind of, and the, the the guy at the door will look at them like, and you're like, oh, I'm on the Nuggets, like. And, you, Correct. Know, you know, like, how does that work? And also, while we're talking about the fun side, I'm going to just do a couple of one-liners for the business side because it's still multiple layers to the business side. Okay. To help you be an elite athlete, you have to have a trainer mm -hmm. in most cases. Just making sure you're working hard, working correctly, improving your speed if you need to, improving your strength if you need to, getting up shots in the gym, you know, doing your 40 times so you don't be Manti Teo running a 4.8. Yeah, yeah. Like, making sure you're on point. Then you have a chef nowadays. You gotta make sure you're eating right. That's one of the improvements that has happened in today's athlete. A lot of people don't realize that LeBron James, at power guard, as I like to call him with perimeter skills, has the size of a power forward from back in the day. Mm -hmm. You look at players that were Hall of Famers, whether Tommy Einson, Wes Unsell, Charles Barkley, he's the same size as Carl Malone. Yeah. At 6'8, 6'9, 260. So these are all of the things that help. I mentioned nutritionists, and obviously, for the All-Star Weekend, I'm proposing this. What's this? Each dunker do two dunks. You get the highest score, you advance. Then the finals, in the finals, those two dunkers do two dunks. You pick a winner. And beyond that, you have a stylist. Have you seen NBA <laughs> players lately? They're, most of these guys are actually paying people to Wait, order these looks for them. Before we do the stylist, did you just like reformat the dunk contest real quick in the middle of this conversation? I did because okay, I let's had move to. On. I was just curious where that came I from. I had to acknowledge another part of the entourage. Okay. That's you have to wear something. Yes. That's your stylist, and every guy wants to try to carve out a niche that makes him different from the next guy. Mm -hmm. Initially, for me. I wanted to wear a low goatee on TV. I felt like I was the only guy doing that. Uh -huh. Then I seen another couple of people rocking goatees. So now I'm going to go to the mustache. <laughs> I'm never going like Jacoby with no hair on my face. <laughs> For some reason, I made up my mind that that will not be my look. So that's also someone. Now, granted, when you're young and have to make these decisions at 21, now it's different giving somebody money at that age versus when that person's 40. Sure. When you're 40, you understand that I don't need to spend $20,000 for the music in my car that's going to make me deaf. Do not. I don't need a 4X shirt. I really wear a 2X. Yeah, or even a large. I, I don't need to take 10 people out to dinner. It's okay if I go with one or two people. Yeah. You save money just off maturity and off lifestyle. But when you're 21... And I don't, I'm not saying any one of these layers of entourage, as we call them, represents negative energy or bad feelings, but they do represent selfish intentions. And their selfish intention is to get in your pocket. Everybody that I just mentioned wants to be paid by you. Yeah, and is being paid by you. But that's a big responsibility because I haven't said anything about your mom, your dad, I haven't said anything about maybe starting a foundation. I haven't said anything about married, divorce, kids with other women. Sure. I haven't said anything about sending your kids to private school. Where you going to live? What's up with your future? What's up with your life insurance policy? What's up with your stocks, your bonds? And there's your only mutuals, 16 your large lottery caps, contracts. Your small caps. Like, you're the only person that is ultimately got to be responsible for your future. Here's the thing that kind of sucks. When you see an athlete struggling, mm -hmm. Wow, that person played X amount of years, made X amount of money. That person did X amount of movies. That person played X amount of years in football. And all of a sudden, they don't have anything. You never hear from the people I just mentioned in the entourage anymore. Yeah. Vamoose. Gone. They're gone in the wind. 
You never see agents talking about, well, I was representing him. He's paying me 4% of his money. Maybe I should have did a better job of trying to intervene. Mm -hmm. the, the, you, you don't the, see the manager saying, you know what? I took 10% on that one project that he really brought to the table. Maybe I should have only took five. Sure. But that they're never going to do that because they want to keep getting money. and They can't say, you know what? I represented this guy who drove him into the ground. How about you give me the next guy? That's not 100%. the way. It that's, not, that's not good for business. So it's almost criminal the way the process works, but that's the level that goes with being a collegiate athlete mm. versus a professional. When you're professional, you all of a sudden have to be responsible for all of these different layers in your life. Now let's can have we, some fun. Can we go back to champagne and campaigning, Jay? Yes. I brought us to the nightclub door. <laughs> You brought us back into the corporate you office. You came through the door. said it before. <laughs> so if you're Costas Kufis, right, and you're trying to go into the nightclub, who does that for you? Because I know Costas Kufis, and shout out to him, no disrespect. <laughs> like, he's not getting into the door at LeBaron or whatever the hot club is now in New York that I haven't lived in. Well, years. he has to do three things. One, overpay. Mm -hmm. Two, get to know promoters immediately. That's another level How of the entourage. That but the people that keep a score... I think that's at around num level number 10. Mm -hmm. And you can tell me on Grantland33, on Twitter, or hit me on Jacoby underscore. That's another subject for another, another day on day. Twitter. <laughs> this is another level of your entourage. Who? The promoter. What do they do? They got to let you know what's hot and what's not. What's going on, where you need to be. Like, just because you're a professional athlete or because you're an Oscar winner, that doesn't mean you have to be a hermit. You like yeah. to go to nice restaurants. You like to go to I'm nice venues. This. It also doesn't like mean to to that you nice have clubs. an in at the nightclubs or even know what's going on. Correct. There are a lot of people, a lot of times, that you may go to your favorite spot and be like, wow, they're waiting in line. Or wow, yeah. they couldn't get in. And one of the mistakes athletes or entertainers or celebrities, as I call them, because I'm not going to pick on athletes. Sure. Celebrities. One of the mistakes they make is, number one is, Sometimes they may get you for dress code. Yeah, but if, I mean, that's not real. But I'm going to tell you what happens. This They're is just a, driving the price no, up. I know, I'm going to tell you the difference between Costa Kufis and LeBron James. <laughs> okay. When he shows up. He could be wearing a silk robe. They could be finding reasons not to let him in, especially if he don't know how to grease some palms. Let me tell you how to grease palms. Mm. For all you youngsters out there, I know you're a celebrity. But that doesn't have anything to do with the goddess valet. Oh, so this is, for, this is for our young celebrity audience? Is that no what you're doing about now? It. We okay. give it up to young what celebrities they want. that are Get listening right now. Get out your pen and paper. Sure, sure. The time I hate the most when I'm going to Champagne and Campaign is the time I'm leaving my destination to the time I'm sitting down in the comfort zone or standing in the place that I'm going. Let me okay. tell you all of the things that happen between that process that you overlook. You got to make sure you know where you're going. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure you get there on time. You got to make sure that you're on point with your parking. Mm -hmm. Here's the first step. Are you valeting? Are you parking two box, blocks away? Okay, yep. most people may park a, couple, park a couple of blocks away and pay the $5. Mm -hmm. But you want to be in the front, so sky's the limit what they're going to charge you. Sure. It depends on what you drive. It depends on what you're rocking. Everybody got social media. Everybody knows what you're driving. Boom. That's going to be $100 for me to park you right in the front. Okay. So that's the first level. So now, here's the guy that just charged you $100. He's actually mad if you don't give him a tip on top of that. And he doesn't want a $2 crumpled up handshake either. No question. Yeah. That might be the guy to take your $100. You come out of the spot and you still got to wait 30 minutes for your car. Yeah. And you're mad at the guy. So you got to look out for everybody along the steps of champagne and campaigning. We started with the valet guy. You got to always take care of the valet guy. Why? Because you want your car prompt and you want your car there when you come out. Yeah. You don't want it scratched with you a want, key. You want, you don't want a flat change tire. in your ashtray. You don't you want to go you through your glove compartment. You don't want to steal in your glove yeah. compartment. Yeah. 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 Look out for that guy. Yep. Now you get to the door. You may be on the list. You may not be on the Everybody's list. Everybody's on the list always, though. The person that you're talking to may know who you are. Mm -hmm. They may not know who they, you are. They probably don't a lot of times. Exactly. Party promoters, not league pass owners. You know Correct. what I mean? <laughs> like, like. And a lot of times the people in line let the people at the door know who you are yep. based on them talking to you. Sure, sure, sure. What's up? Giving you dab, giving you pound, whatever. 
So now, you're at the door, whether you're not on the list or whatever. When that person finally removed the rope and let you in, give them a 20. But they're not letting you in. Give them a 10. The first question they're asking, what's the first question they ask? What list are you on or who you with? And how many? Or how many? How many? That's the next thing. If you say seven. That's the next thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ice Cube said this best on an NWA record. With six people in the car, are you crazy? <laughs> that really drives up inflation for your night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you're showing up, you have a date with you, you showing up, you got one or two of your peoples with you. All good. Nice tip, $20, $10. No problem. Boom, you walk in. Enjoy your night. That's a good dude. He was all good. See you on the way out, Mr. Rose. And by the way, he was dressed proper. Yeah. Had on a nice little blazer. Nice guy. He wasn't tripping at all. Uh-huh. Now you show up, you and your entourage are already full because y'all stopped at a couple of other spots. Yep. And it's 10 of y'all. One or two of y'all may have on something that relates to the dress code. Mm-hmm. The other 80 of y'all aren't dressed at all. Three or four of y'all don't have the ID. One or two of them may not even be 21. And they're all looking at the, the athlete or the entertainer or the celebrity saying, I'm with him, so I'm good. Correct. That's an issue Mm -hmm. because a lot of times the person at the door, even if they still let you in, please remember, they feel some kind of way that they just let in eight dudes. Yes. A lot of them weren't ready. A lot of them weren't dressed properly. So I technically looked out for you. Mm. I couldn't have stopped you from getting in, I guess, eventually because you're a celebrity, you would have gotten in and gone over my head. Sure. But I could have created another barrier for you. And I didn't. Mm. You got to grease my palms. So when the other guy was probably walking in with his date, giving a 10 or a 20, you got to get that guy a couple of 20s or a 50. Mm. You got to look out for the people that's looking out for you. For sure. So now you get past that barrier. What you don't realize is... You're not in the VIP section yet. (laughs) And or if you want to get in the VIP section... Bottles. You got to get a two-bottle minimum. At least. And this bottle that normally costs you at the store $50... They're selling it for eight hundred dollars. Yeah, and oh, do you what would you like that cranberry juice and orange juice? They're we'll tr- throw that in for free. They're giving you, you know? all of the credit, giving yeah. you a lifetime yeah. to buy a cranberry, yeah. pineapple, yeah. OJ water, all of that. Always from concentrate too. I would love to get some fresh squeezed orange juice in a club once. No question. To sit over here, that's going to be fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now you and your either date. And our entourage go in. Now, granted, you hope you and your date aren't drinking two bottles. But that's the problem. That's what I'm pointing out in this whole champagne in the campaign scenario. Mm. I'm with my mate. I don't want all of this. No. So what am I gonna do with it? You end up sharing it with the people that come sure, and give you that. Round or whatever, yeah, you know, yeah. B- hooking people up with rounds. That doesn't sound like a very romantic date anymore. Running into people that you know. No. You can't have a romantic date a lot of times when you're a public figure. You mm-hmm. can't have a romantic dinner when you're a public figure. I could be sitting having dinner with my kids. If people come up to me and say, Jana, can I have an autograph? And I say, not right now, I'm having a dinner with my daughter. A couple of them will say, screw him. Does that really happen? How often do people bother you while you're sitting down and eating? Um, if the pie was 100%, I would say 70. Yeah, 70% of the time you sit down and eat, someone's gonna come over and say hi. Yes, and I'm not a germaphobe, but I'm not a dummy, yeah, yeah. and I'm really not trying to be sitting there eating and shaking somebody's hand while I'm eating, eating. even if I'm yeah. by myself. And there's the whole sitting, standing thing. Like, yes. shaking. It's, like it's weird, like when you walked into the studio today, I was sitting down, it's just weird to give somebody a pound when it's like the sitting, standing thing. It's almost like going in the bathroom and somebody just got finished handling their business and they're headed to the sink. You just come in to go handle your business, but they want to acknowledge you that's the most awkward thing ever yeah. because I don't want your dad. Yeah, I'll take the, the, the Bash Brothers of forearm. I don't even want that. <laughs> We're in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is not an intimate setting. Let's not take a picture in here. Yeah, yeah. That should not go down. So when I'm at the spot and I come in with the entourage, we're just going to talk about having the entourage now. Yeah. That $1,500 minimum now turns into everybody in your entourage, when they see people that they want to get at, Say that you're with a dude they want to holler at a young lady that's 50 feet away. Sure. All of a sudden, you don't realize this, but you're buying her drinks too. Yep. 
All of a sudden, one of the people that you're hanging with knows a couple of homeboys from the neighborhood or know a couple of homeboys he went to college with mm -hmm. or whatever. You're buying them drinks too. Yeah. And when and when the hostess comes over, who you're ha you're gonna have to tip at least two, three hundred, four hundred dollars. When she comes over and one of the people that you're with says, "Oh, let's take another bottle of Ciroc," that doesn't go on his. They don't do separate tabs. <laughs> you know, they're like they're, 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 when the, the hostess at the end of the night doesn't walk over and say, "Oh, we're, are we gonna split this separate tabs?" That's not how it works. And my goal as a hostess is to make the bill as high as possible and let you and the club worry about sure. it at the end of the night. Sure. So if one of the members of your entourage that I clearly see that are sitting with you gives us the girl head to go grab orange juice. And you don't say anything, mm -hmm. and I bring back the orange juice. When that same person gives me to go ahead to go get another bottle, I'm going to get another yeah. bottle. And the hostesses don't look like uh, servers at a diner. Let's just say that. Correct. They're persuasive. Correct. They should be the nightclub version, I would say, of what we see at Hooters. Something like that. <laughs> that would be correct. They're mm -hmm. dressed in a in, in the they're dressed in the kind of outfits that not only <laughs> want you to buy bottles. But they yeah. want you to feel like and you're in a festive they're, they're always mood. super social and fun yes. and smiley and, you know, having a good time. But they're working hard. They're yeah. there to get tips, and they want you to have a nice yeah. time. And they deal with a lot of BS. But they want you to have a nice tap. Yeah. So now it's at the end of the night. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here comes the bill. The bill is $3,500. Sure. Your seven people in your entourage? Where'd they go? They're not putting up seven credit cards to split it seven ways. <laughs> no? That doesn't happen. You're splitting the bill with yourself. Mm -hmm. And the more times you do that, because I've done it uh -huh. 500 times, <laughs> you start to feel like, I'm being taken advantage of right now. That's an interesting feeling, Jalen. Talk to me about that. Because here's the deal. You ever took somebody out to dinner and they order stuff that they wouldn't order if they were paying for it? Yes. Like, they're ordering soup now. They order salad now. They want to try the special now. They want to try the entree now. They want to order the extra dessert. Mm. All of this stuff. Mm -hmm. They just ordered 10 courses. If they weren't paying for it, they wouldn't be ordering that. But take me to Jalen Rose sitting at the table. The lights are on in the club now. And the bill comes, and you signed it, and and your your friends and and whatever First you call off, them. First off, I've seen a lot of athletes do this. Let me just say this: I got my shirt on. Okay. Number okay. one. Okay, we've well, got your shirt on. Okay. Now everyone's starting to filter out. And what's that feel? When you say you feel like you're taking advantage of, tell me what you're feeling. Everybody wants to feel festive at the end of the night and get a goal accomplished. Go out mm -hmm. and champagne a campaign. Everybody get home safely. Whatever. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the night, everybody wants to feel appreciated, too. Absolutely. Here's the biggest misconception that I hear people say. Everybody wants to be appreciated. And that's what we're talking about in these steps. We're talking about the entourage, to the valet, to the, to the hostess. Man. Sure. Everybody wants to feel appreciated. And respected. So the person in your life that doesn't necessarily want you to, hey, don't worry about it. You don't have to thank me. He's good. He makes $10 million a year. Yeah. What's, what's, what's $3,500 yeah. to him? The person in your life that... You know, open the door for you today. And you, how many times have you opened the door for somebody that was a complete stranger and they walk right through and didn't acknowledge you? And you and feel you, a certain way for five seconds. And you say, you welcome. Yeah. You feel a certain way. <laughs> I, I don't do that for sure. Right? I took my time and energy to be polite to you. Mm -hmm. I would appreciate if you at least acknowledge me. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm one of those please, thank you, big smile kind of personalities Absolutely. anyway. Absolutely. But the reason why I am that way is because of these experiences that I'm describing. Plus, also, the neighborhood I come from, your body language, your attitude, you're wanting to be too tough, you want to be the big man when you should just be quiet. Yeah. That type of behavior can expire your days. Mm. And I want to live till I'm 100. <laughs> I want to see you at 100. And the only way to do that is to treat people the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. And at the end of those nights, while you understand that you're the person that quote unquote can afford it, you are also the person that was responsible for showing everybody else the time of their week, yep. the time of their month, the time of their lives. Mm -hmm. And when you multiply those trips and you multiply those nights out, versus what you're getting in return, you start to realize 
And I used to have this on my voicemail. I was one of those people that used to could call and they had their favorite music playing on the voicemail to be all it will be all muffled and you could really hear it put the component speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're recording it right next to the boom box. Exactly. Yeah. You still have a musical ringtone. I do. <laughs> I was that guy. And I remember one time putting on my voicemail, and, I, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get this wrong. I would be like, basically, are you leaving a voicemail because you're here to add, subtract, multiply, or divide? Please state it in your message. Because that's what happens when people call you. They're hitting you up for one of those four things. Explain. If you call in to add, that means you're calling to let me know about something that we can yeah. do positive and we're going to bring bread together. Sure. You're bringing me that can't lose I want to add some shoes to the Jalen Rose Leadership Academy. No doubt. You're bringing something to the table. Mm -hmm. you're, you're a positive asset. Mm -hmm. If you're there to subtract, you're there to take away. You're asking. Yes. You want gifts. You on a loan that we both know you're never going to pay back. Mm -hmm. For whatever it's worth. Mm -hmm. Not a diss, just a fact. God puts people in positions a lot of times that he feels like they can handle. So if he gave you that leadership in your family where you become the breadwinner, there is a responsibility to come with that. I burned up my knees for years asking for that responsibility. Sure. So I have to be man enough to accept the good and the bad that comes with it. Mm -hmm. Are you here to multiply? I like this one. I don't even know what it means. I mean, it's one thing if you want to add something. It's another thing if you're trying to multiply. If you're bringing some deals, you're yeah. bringing me some low-hanging fruit. If you're showing me some ways that I can go meet somebody or put me in a situation to now take what we're trying to get accomplished, what I'm trying to get accomplished to the next level, cool. And or if you're trying to divide, if you're calling me to gossip, you're calling me to talk about other people. So-and-so said you this about you, yep. If you get jammed up, don't mention my name. <laughs> don't mention my name. I just don't like that at all. <laughs> So what I used to do, and I still do this, so if you have my number, you're in one of these four categories when I hear your message. And if you're there to divide or subtract, 95% of the time, I press seven and don't even listen to your message. Okay. And it's not that I don't want that person necessarily to not even have my number, because if I didn't want you to have my number, I would just change it. It's because I have to stay so focused on all of the things that I'm trying to get accomplished and I'm trying to juggle that a lot of times when you lose that focus or you lose that direction, it takes you off of what you're tr really trying to get accomplished, your greater good, your greater goal. So that's how an entourage can add to you and it can take away from you. Okay. I forgot one member of the entourage. Who's that? Female liaison. Ooh, I'm back in. You gotta have a diverse crowd. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna say that. Mm -hmm. Male, female, Racial, black, white. Yeah, styles of dress. Hispanic. Yeah. yeah. Jewish. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Asian. You mm -hmm. want a nice melting pot. Yes. I, I ain't talking about having fun. Okay. In order to have fun, you got to have a lot of people that get festive in a lot of different ways. Yeah, and like you want like that heavy different metal rock exposure. and roll dude with you and like the hip hop goon with no you and doubt. The, the nerdy guy. No yeah. doubt. You want a mixed bag. I like multiple types of music. Mm -hmm. I like to go multiple places. Mm -hmm. I have a few stamps in my passport. I'm going, I'm growing from the Detroit kid. I have a question, Jalen. Yes, sir. What's that got to do with the female liaison? That's what has to do with okay, it. Okay, explain. I'm growing from the guy that said... Who wants to go to Europe is not Detroit. So because of that, you have to have the female liaison, and I'm talking about for athletes or NBA players or celebrities or whoever. Female liaison is the person that, if you're hanging out with all of your homeboys, you're not going to necessarily attract young ladies to come hang out with y'all if it's 10 of y'all. She's yeah. going to be intimidated. It's just weird. Who's, like, who's going to want to sit down around 10 dudes? You're talking to her, your homeboy looking her yeah. up and down, yeah. the other homeboy Get... talking in her other ear, yeah. the other boy like, where your girls at? That's not comfortable. So she becomes uncomfortable, the situation becomes uncomfortable, and you cut off your opportunity for growth. Mm -hmm. When you have the female liaison, you heard Biggie make the phrase... Your, your, friend, your, your friends get with my your friends. Your friends get with my friends and we can, can be, be friends. friends. Exactly. Right? That's where the female liaison comes in. She tells you that outfit is terrible. She tells you we should go to this club because it's going to be a good look. She tells you we shouldn't go to this place because mm -hmm. my friends aren't going there. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we stopped going there six months ago. Don't go there. No question about it. She breaks up the monotony. And uh, uh, this is, is this a, a, a romantic female friend? This cannot be a romantic friendship. Here's why. If it's a romantic friendship, then all of a sudden it's just you and your girl hanging out with eight of your boys. Yeah. So that doesn't work. That doesn't really work. This has to be somebody that's going to get on her phone and call other friends to come hang out with all mm -hmm. of y'all. And she can, and, and like, I don't, I think people like to play the tough guy role a lot, but everybody needs that sort of female friend to ask certain questions to, to look for, for advice with female relations or their mom or sister or whatever. Like, everybody needs that. I don't care how goony you are. And the reason why she becomes a female liaison is she's a part of the crew, but yet she gets to know that your people in your crew so she learns their strengths and weaknesses. So she's not going to hook your boy up that hasn't had a job and ain't trying to do nothing with his life where her girlfriend is about to go to law school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's going to hook her girlfriend up that's trying to go to law school probably with your homeboy that's going to college. Or wants to be an agent. Or, or that wants sure. to yeah. do something with his life. So she has to understand that she's connecting two worlds. She don't want her friends mad at her for mm -hmm. trying to hook them up with y'all. But she wants her friends to be like, hmm, I like hanging out with her. I ran into some main men hanging around with her. That was yeah, a good look. It is a good look. So that's why you got to have a female liaison. Your friends get with my friends. And we can be we friends. We can be friends. And we can do this every, every weekend. Every weekend we can do this. Now let's just do a recap. Let's just recap the, the entourage members for the listening audience. Okay, for those keeping count, there's agent, manager, financial advisor. Mm -hmm. Publicist, trainer, chef. Okay. Nutritionist, stylist. You need somebody a part of your marketing promotional team. Mm -hmm. We forgot one person. Female liaison. Who's looking out for my back? When I have females going around, my guys are getting champagne in the campaign. And who's the person that's the eyes and ears, the hawk, the goon? Ooh. That's the person that. Nobody move, nobody gets hurt. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody's having fun, but I got to make sure that he's safe and sound at the end of the night. Mm -hmm. I got to make sure she gets where she's going at the end of the night. Nah. That's our meal ticket. Yeah, and let's, but let's not, let's not make it sound like this is some thug security gang member type of thing either. Not this is just, this is just like a skeptical friend. I forgot, the, we do have a diverse audience yeah, listening see, to this. Yeah, they like, might take the term going yeah, like, the oh wrong my way. goodness, this is, he's seven foot, 300 pound exactly. guy. Exactly, this is not, this is not a, a security guard or like, you know, a gun toter. This is more like a skeptical friend who's, who's always, always, that assuming people are guilty until they're proven innocent, that's kind of like got your back. No doubt about it. This is the person that's not doing what everybody else is doing. They're there with you. They see the movable parts, but they're there to just make sure you get from point A to point B mm -hmm. in a timely fashion because you got practice the next day. You got to go to your movie set the next day. You got to go to your law office the yeah. next day. You got to go to your fortune. Uh, for, you got to go to your fortune 500 business the next day. There's a misconception that. Only just athletes have people around them that are security or goons or stuff like Not that. Not the case. If you have something to lose, if you have somebody that needs interest that needs to be protected, that's all we're describing. I think that makes perfect sense. Now, the thing is, is on this podcast, we don't always talk about just basketball. Like We could have talked about Dwight Howard shooting free throws or which guys didn't get traded and this and that and the Miami Heat, but that's... You're not always going to get that 100 time, 100% 100 of the time on this podcast. But what you are going to get is what the people want. We know Dwight Howard was 2 for 14 from the line. The 3 Lakers for are, 14, whatever. The Lakers are two games under 500, yep. around three, three, three and a half Probably games gonna the They're probably going to get the eight seed. Lakers, right. Lakers, two, Lakers, two Lakers blah, 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 blah. LeBron heat, James Houston is really Rockets. good at basketball. Maybe triple, they're double, get blah, the blah, blah, blah. AC. The Nuggets did well. Right. They're young and they Danny run Granger fast. Return. Yeah, they're all going to get back. We'll see what Derrick Rose has been practicing. No doubt about it. Okay, there's your NBA update. Fisher. There's your NBA update right there. We got it. Next week, Chandler Rose Report, give the people what they want. Gotta give them what they need. Hey! Jalen Rose is basically a tall, super cool Yoda. I wonder who would win a game of one-on-one? -on -one? Probably Jalen.